Well, build a little drift rally car hobgoblin out of a 2009 Chevy Cobalt, they say, and everything will be good. I've been trying to figure out why this thing doesn't start yet, and uh, then I realized we need to plumb some custom EFI lines. So let's get to it. All right, now, did I mention we're going full standalone on this sucker? At this point in the build, we're slowly throwing away all the GM components and we're just gonna go full standalone on the harness, which kind of leads us to where we're at now, which I think is gonna be easier in the long run. All right, so in order to get Humpty Dumpty the Hobgoblin back together again, which is no easy task, I teamed up with a company called Evil Energy. And uh, these are big guys. These are really big guys that make great products here. And I used their stuff on the tea bucket about a year ago before we went to do the power tour. And that was the one thing that actually didn't leak. So because we're using the LNF, most of it is push lock fittings here and they're all AN6. So again, the reason I went with Evil is they have the all-in-one kit, and it's not just for the Ecotech we're working on here, so. But what I wanted was, was all the EFI fittings here, every single EFI fitting. That way we're not missing anything. Look that, push lock. And then for the line, we're just gonna go with a PTFE, I call it hydraulic hose, but essentially it's, it's braided outer, plastic inner is the simplest way to put it. It's not gonna chafe or rub. This is the same stuff I used on the tea bucket and surprisingly, we made it as far as we did. You know, if you've ever worked on a Ecotech LNF before, this is probably one of the hardest things to actually line up. I know it sounds crazy, but it's almost like the machining for the two is not quite right. You gotta kinda, kinda force it on there. Now, a lot of guys get I'll tell you, you get intimidated by working on EFI systems, but you know, to me, these are one of the one of the easiest to actually work on versus carburetor. But that's you know, that's just my generation. It's it's different generations growing up with different stuff. To me, this stuff is is simple. All right, so to get us started, essentially, we just six a.m. to three eighths female. Well, it's it's the other way around, but. Yeah, I get, I get my genders mixed up here. It's, it's, society's pretty screwed up. So that's just gonna pinch right onto there instead of using just a piece of hose with a clamp. And then we're just gonna tie a net down. And you'll see how this all comes together. Like I said, this is this easier than doing the hose with those dumb little clamps. And then what I think we'll do is we'll run the, uh, the, the gauge right off the top here and then bend it down. And essentially we need to go to our quick disconnect push here to run that up into that there. So let's see what we got here to make all this work. I uh, believe that is for, yep. It's gonna go for our gauge there. We need another quick disconnect and that we should be good. All right, so we'll slap, and we'll put our gauge there. Let's grab another one. Maybe we can go a different route with this. Nah, that'll be in the way. So we'll slap our gauge here. And then what we'll do is, we'll, you know, we'll get kind of a uh, rough mock-up and then we'll pull everything apart and then tighten everything up. And then we can put it all back in place. That way it'll be just like a system that you can remove and service, but you'll never have to service this honestly once it's on here. So our gauge will smack right on top of there so we can see everything we got going on. And we'll put this, we'll do a 45 here. We may angle it just a little bit. So for the feet, I just put the quick disconnect on there and then we're gonna run this 3 8 adapter so we can do our line. Now, really, we're not really going, actually, you know what? I think a 45 would be good on there. All right, let's see what we got here. I know we got, that would that would work. So we don't need to go far with this here, but still need to get a measurement. We got so much hose, so much hose. So we're gonna go here. And I honestly could just use a string to do this, but it's not as fun as trying to fight EFI hose. That'll go right. In there, I do want a little bit of slack on here because what I like to do is if we cut too short, 
And if you ever have an issue, you can't reuse that hose again. And uh, at least this way, we have extra hose and we can always cut it down in the future. All right, so I got our hose cut. I'm gonna show you how to make uh, EFI line. There's a lot of expensive little doohickey tools out there and to, to do this, you, you, don't, you don't need to spend all the money on those tools. Let me show you this. So ferrule, you got your line cut, right? You got your plastic tubing. So there's a little ferrule and you, and you can't use, you know, this setup here like this and then, and then put the crimp on it and, and call it a day if you're doing, re, you know, real nice show quality EFI line. So take that ferrule there. It takes a little bit of work. You take that. I mean, you don't even need to use this and essentially just jam that sucker in there. All right. And what you can do too is push it against a flat surface, just like you do at 11 o'clock at night when nobody's around. You can push that sucker in there. All right. And then we'll take the other end of our swivel, slap that in there, and then on the other end, run that down there. And again, you're gonna, we're gonna have to put some put some force into this. It's not just gonna come together. And you can probably find a better tool than a set of channel locks, but everything around here seems to go missing when I need it. <laughs> and then when I don't need it, there's like three of them floating around. All right, there you have it. We got a tip on there. Now we get to do it again. All right, so 45's on there. We got our straight. Essentially, I just saved you 50 bucks. That's how you make an EFI hose right there. Let's put her on. Hopefully, we got the angles right here. I'll go on there. And then... All right, make sure we get the angle just right. That will still be able to swivel there. All right, so I'm using essentially, it's a, well, what do you want to call it? A non marring, jarring? Doesn't damage the billet aluminum on the threads. All right, we'll take a look at that. Our little inline gauge is set. So hopefully that sucker don't leak there. And hopefully the liquid filled one will help. There's not really much vibration with this motor. So eh, I'm not really too concerned about that. We're not, we can't really test the, uh, well, can't really check for leaks until we get the thing started or at least primed up a little bit, but we're good to go for now. So again, quick disconnect up here. That way we can do the hose. I know it's a little bit long. Again, this is for long term. I don't want to have to keep replacing it if it ever came down to it, if it get chafed or something. So we can just cut it there, cut it down there, and then shorten it up if we need to kind of adjust it. And then kind of quick disconnect here. So now we still got, well, Essentially, as I call it, the overflow, it's not really the right name of it, and the return, which is right in there. Now, the LNF does not recycle fuel like the uh, other ones do that are not direct injection. I believe the LDK does as well. It recycles the fuel, well, unspent fuel back into the tank and then recycles it through. It does not. The fuel pump that we have here was designed for the recycling. So we're gonna have to get that routed as well there and honestly I think you know, we could really just kind of kind of plug that into there route that up to the that even fits there all right so now we need to fix we're gonna run more lines but now we need to fix this issue that GM never well they never really took care of before they filed bankruptcy and you know psh, this motor went away here but I ain't no engineer or scientist but they were recycling the oil from the valve cover there essentially back into the intake manifold, which would cause with the direct injection, significant carbon buildup in here, especially on the valves, and it would really bog down power. So instead of running that, which would actually run up in here, we're gonna get that plugged off. We're gonna make more evil lines. We're gonna run those lines from here with the same thing, A and six to three eights. And we're gonna take them all the way over, we'll tie them into this one, ah, and then we'll, ah, you thought I was gonna go to the gas tank. I'm not that I'm not that crazy here. I'm not not that insane here, but hear me out. For aesthetic purposes, we'll run it around here, back into there, and then we're gonna do a nice inconspicuous oil catch can there. That way we can do the collection of that. I, I don't want that running back through my system here, especially considering the fact we just literally, literally just 
rebuilt this thing here. Now, for the guys out there that aren't building fuel lines and would rather suck in the oil through their intake manifold, you can actually take this off and, and clean this with walnuts and kind of clean up your, uh, your valves and stuff, but kind of got to take the whole motor part again. So look, it takes 20 minutes to run a line off that, get rid of that, going into that. Heck, I didn't even see if this is the right size either. Ha ha! And six three eighths. Imagine that. Getting lucky here. So I'm not going to cut the other end just yet till we find our oil catch cam. But yeah, I'm really starting to like this stuff actually. I think I used something similar from these guys on the T bucket, but now that I'm looking in here a little closer, you can see cloth braided, wire braided, and then I keep calling it PEX tube. It's not PEX, but um, man. Look how thick that stuff is on the interior there. So I've got to ream that out just a little bit. Like I said, they make a they make a countertop tool, or somebody makes a countertop tool for this, and it is what it is. Man, these are sharp though. Gotta be a little careful right here. A little bit of a change of plans here. What is gonna do? essentially a 180 here, wrap it back. But, you know, we're not using this as, as EFI line at this point. We're just using it for aesthetic purposes because it matches. And uh, essentially this, this line does not kink. Like you can't kink it. Just wrap that sucker this way here. Ooh, that's sharp, whatever that was. Dang. Wrap that that way. And then we do a little bit, and we can put those together just like that there. And then what we'll do is we'll wrap that, we'll route that, bring that this way, and then we'll clamp these together, wrap that around there. Check this thing out, it's looking sick. So we got our off vapors here for the valve cover, loomed in right into our EFI lines. And I ended up using uh, essentially spark plug wire holders that I bought too big when I built the T-bucket, but man, that's looking really clean right there. Get a good look at that. So we'll leave this hose spool here for now until I figure out how I'm going to do, well, to figure out what oil catch can. I got a few, just haven't figured out which one we're going to use, but man, look how simple that is compared to just using the OEM junk that was on here before. That's pretty sweet. Now I kind of want to tackle all the stuff in the front end with this and kind of spice it up a little bit. Actually, it's really, really got me thinking because now I'm like looking at the T-bucket and uh, I ended up using Evil's push lock fittings on all this with 3 8 uh, fuel line, essentially using hydraulic hose, but you know, kind of want to, kind of want to upgrade all this and, and get something a little better going because, well, we kind of ran out of line and that's just pushed onto there now. So, wow, we're going to add this one to the list here. Actually, you know, now that I think about it, that setup got us, that setup actually got us over like 10,000 miles so far on a T-bucket, not including last year's power tour that took five days, but over the past year and a half or so, it's, it's uh, well, yeah, year, uh, it's 10,000 miles. So you know what? Scratch that. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not, we're not going to touch it. The motor runs at this point. Uh, knock on drywall. We're not touching it. All right, so that's about all we can really do with our evil line here. Uh, we got plenty of fittings left over. Actually, I think we got plenty of fittings left over, but we really need to get that oil catch can to kind of finalize everything out uh, and run the rest of our line on that too. The other thing I want to do is, I think I'm going to get rid of that. I think we're going to run some AN10 lines for this as well. That's actually a bad design, if you didn't know, from GM. Imagine that, another bad GM design. So that tank on the Cobalts, the Pontiacs, the Saturns, the Sky, the the HH, if it was equipped with the LNF, well, and some of the LDKs, uh, they were prone to cavitation of the water pump, which would cause a ton of overheating issues. Uh, and it all had to do with the placement of that tank and the heater core and the way the uh, lines were run. So that reminds me, we're gonna get some one-way check valves that we have to install in the coolant system too, but we'll get some hose for that. We'll get a new tank. We'll get our oil catch can. We'll get our standalone harness, and then I think pretty damn close to getting this thing running here. To be honest with you, I'm kind of tired of uh, tripping over it in the garage, and I need, I need it out. I'm running out of room. 
All right, guys, so at this point, go ahead and check the description below. Give you a little discount on some evil stuff from the evil store, evil energy store there. And then it's also on Amazon. And, and again, it's, it's, it's phenomenal stuff. I've, I've used it for years. I love it. And it was really something I wanted to do, especially on the Goblin here, just because it, it looks so damn good. So in the meantime, we'll get those parts. Check out the channel for some other uh, sometimes exciting videos. Sometimes, eh, depends what we're working on. When stuff breaks, you know, entertainment's not there, right? So catch you guys later.